so it's Sunday, it's uh, the Icarus, uh, ooh, the Icarus, <laughs> I'm not had a drink yet, the Icarus Christmas party for the staff and the volunteers. Um, obviously didn't have one last year because, you know, we don't run to the same rules as old Boris. Um, but this year we are not only having a Christmas party, what is going on? It's like bloody spring. It's freezing and wet up here yesterday while we were preparing. I've just been raking up some last minute leaves and having a last minute tidy up. Ready mould didn't escape my attention. He still has escaped my attention still. And it is, I'm actually boiling. It is ridiculous. It's probably in double figures temperature wise. So it's not like a, a beautiful frosty morning of yesteryear in December when there's a blue sky. It's like spring. There are so many insects flying around. The whole climate in my lifetime has changed. And if you don't believe it, <laughs> You've probably not lived as long as I have, I don't know. But it's, it just never was like this when I was a kid. Anyway, it's a beautiful day, a beautiful day. All the birds are done and dusted for today. They've not had any exercise, they've had a day off, uh, as I had the staff. <laughs> and it is all about, just to say thank you, really, for the hard work the, the staff and volunteers have done, not only this year, but of course last year, in that dreadful year when the times were so, so very tough. Um, and let's just hope we have a good time. Jackie's doing a good job in the back room. We've got some music playing. We've got some drinks. Everyone's been told to do a lateral flow test. Um, it's a big area building with the doors open and such like, a barn really. And of course we've got a lateral flow test <laughs> at the counter before you come in, the, even come in from the outside. So anyone that hasn't done one is gonna get their nose rootled around and they're not allowed in unless they're all clear for COVID. I think we've done all we can in the circumstances. Uh, everybody feels safe and happy. And of course you can't, you know, you can't all be off sick in a tiny team of people with a lot of animals to look after. If you're all down with something, it's not just our illness and our not feeling well, who's gonna look after the birds, as I said in the last one. So, time for me to go and pour myself a drink. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the vlog. Oh, welcome to the vlog. <laughs> Oh, before anyone gets here, we're going to eat all the nice yummies and drink the best drinks. <laughs> Don't tell the others. Here's a snake I don't see too much of. It's got a sort of a, a nice enclosure that it can disappear in. It's very arboreal. And it's the green bush snake, or the green bush rat snake, or trinket snake. Have a look at this guy. Oh, a little bit closer to come apart. You can see it's not handled very often. Telling me off. Vibrate. Oh. <laughs> Vibrating its tail as a warning <laughs> and backing that warning up for sure. So, a snake that kind of lives a peaceful life, doesn't come to schools, it's very often hidden away in its vivarium. So, not a snake that's handled and it's showing its displeasure. But don't worry. What are you doing? I've got a whippy old, whippy old uh, tail we've got there. It's going back in its vivarium, but something unusual. I don't know if I can get this into focus. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, why my nose? It's too. Uh, it's not a sporting target at all. Green bush rat snake, absolutely fantastic. A beautiful green snake, which is quite nice. Um, and also, you're making yourself nervous now. And also, a snake that doesn't grow very big. This is an adult, so it's a snake with a, a well-set-out planted vivarium that looks beautiful when it is out and can be in a really naturalistic enclosure. It's not going to outgrow it. <laughs> don't you dare but a real beautiful world a real beautiful green curd snake absolutely beautiful anyway i think i'm cheating him off let's get him back into his enclosure in the snake room doing a little snaky video um as i've actually said on that video if you are subscribed to the channel and you like 
falconry, or you like snakes, or you like British wildlife, and you're not interested in all of them like me and other people are, and many other people are, stay subscribed because you'll notice that I'll, I'll swap between the, the different subjects. So if I put a video out this week about uh, falconry, for instance, next week it'll be about one about snakes and maybe in the summer the following week it'll be about British wildlife so we'll kind of keep keep going through the topics that I love stay subscribed and pick and choose the ones that you like um, you may remember if you watched the vlogs that well I think it was the first vlog of this new channel I said to you I won't do any negativity except this and I told you guys on vlog number one about uh, a competitor with a competitor, a comp another falconry centre in another county. And you may remember I said to you, there's no such thing as competition in this game because it's a gentleman's sport and there's not enough falconry centres that we have to compete and spite and step on each other for work because people like to go to different falconry centres anyway. Um, and this guy, as I told you, I haven't named him Shandrin yet and I, I, I'm kind of on the fence about this, but this guy had really gone to town on Icarus Fulkery. He was really ripping off our name and my staff's hard work um, massively, um, embarrassingly so, the lengths this guy's gone to, to try and cash in on our hard work. But that's enough about that. What I wanted to say in this vlog, because I said in the previous one, is, is I've told you, Fulkery centres and Fulkers, they help each other. We'd have to know each other. If someone rang me up and said, Dave, I think I've lost a bird and it's in Northamptonshire, and if I find it, I'm going to get that bird back to him. I'm going to go out of my way to try and help that guy out. You know, and male or female, it's equal opportunities this game for sure. Now, along that note, um, Dan Mercer from Mercer Fulkery and his friend and helper, Jared, they popped down to see us, um, was it yesterday? Maybe the day before yesterday. And that's what we're like. I might say to someone, I might say to Mark Hammond at Wildwoods, can I come and have a day out there? And he'll be, yeah, come on, come and have a look around and talk you through it. And all different people. If I go into an area of England and I know there's a Falkery Centre there, um, I might only know the people that run it off of Facebook, for goodness sakes. But we're all there to help each other. We all like entertaining each other and showing off what we've got and what we do. And we all help each other with ideas and, and ways around things. So... It was really good to see um, Dan and Jared down at Icarus Full Curry this week. And, and, you know, that's how it should be. And that's how it is with everyone, except that one fly in the ointment. Anyway, enjoy. I'm up at the Full Curry Centre, uh, not because I've come up here to do some work, but I've got Jared here and Dan. Dan Mercer from Mercer Full Curry. And these guys have come up for a jolly, really. I think, I think they've just come out for a bit of a day out. And... Been quite interesting because Mercer Fulkery is a growing business and I have to say if you're looking for experience days or school education or of course outside events up towards Derbyshire, South Derbyshire. That's where they're from. It's a funny accent, I couldn't place it. <laughs> my accent isn't from there, mine's from Yorkshire. Oh, so it's probably worse. confuses some of my viewers because I'm not where I sound bright like I'm it's probably from. better than my voice. Look at him. Yeah, he sounds like it. I'm a Derby. I can't understand what they're saying. But anyway, <laughs> if you want a school education with Birds of Prey, or you want experience days up that way for sure, or of course, wherever you live, because for our experience days here at Icarus Fulkery, like anything, people like to go to different places and go around. So check out Mercer Fulkery, uh, certainly for education and certainly for outside events through the summer months. This guy is up and coming. And of course, he's got a really popular Fulkery YouTube channel called <laughs> Mercer Fulkery. How about that? So there'll be a link in the description. Check out the YouTube it's channel. It's, it's really, it's back to front one, isn't it? It's really going places. So check out and there'll be a link in the description. Enjoy the rest of the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> we're up at the Falconry Centre at Icarus Falconry and we're going to go out and fly one of the birds uh, our project lugger lugger falcon so that's Joe's department and she's been flying and exercising that bird all through the summer since she came here as a, a few weeks old so for those that don't know uh, an eight week old falcon is completely fully grown fully feathered and ready to go so she looked like this when we got her at about eight weeks old. And Joe's just readying her. She's changing her equipment, getting her flying Jessies on so her muse Jessies don't tangle in trees or any such thing like that. We've always got to think of the Murphy's Law with falconry. And of course, the falcon's hooded while Joe does this and it keeps the bird calm and makes Joe's job an awful lot easier as well. And on her tail there, you'll see a transmitter. 
Lugger falcons are a very long winged falcon and they've got a long tail, especially in their first year. So we're going to head out onto the flying lawn and we're going to see Joe fly this falcon to the lure. And it's all part of this bird's daily exercise routine. So we are in the thick of a bird flu, an avian influenza epidemic right now. And the guidelines are we can't put our birds out to weather. So it's, it's, it's nice that, that we can still fly the birds because of the, obviously if you've sat around all day, uh, the change of scene hasn't really come your way. At least getting airborne, burning off some calories, burning off some energy and getting in the sky is probably quite a nice part of your day and it ends with all of your food in one go so that's definitely the nice part of your day if you are a bird of prey so let's head out onto the front lawn of Holdenby House where you can come and see us during the summer the spring and summer and late summer open weekends you can wander around the gardens here at the lovely Holdenby estate and see our wonderful birds fly over to Joe So the bird's looking over its shoulder at us, us guys, on this camera, the audience. Joe's just cast the bird off and she'll do a couple of laps and what this bird tends to do, not ideal for falcon, she often sits down and waits for Joe to ready the lure, but right now she's been a good girl and she's staying airborne. So if you fly a falcon, what you don't really want to do is sit down like this, so watch this. Oh, that's good. Joe's got her attention. She's got her around. That's great because that's not forming that habit anymore. Sometimes a falcon will sit down or take stand in a tree and they come incredibly slow to get going and they can. They can actually become a habit where they sit down every few minutes for a rest. That's not going to get the bird fit. So Joe's under pressure for her lure swinging because the whole world's going to see her now. And again, for those that don't know, the lure is a bit of leather on a string to you and I, but to her, it's actually represents a bird. Falcons are bird catchers and bird killers. And flying a falcon backwards or forwards to a glove or out of a tree to a glove, he's never gonna get those muscles and cardio fit. Wow, look at the maneuverability. So the long wings give these birds a fighter jet attack mode. High speed gives them high maneuverability. And of course, on cue, it's Matt in the garden. There he is over there, look at his little tractor. Wow, look at that. Lovely long wings, that silhouette of the falco. The genus falco, sickle shaped or sickle, with all about their wing design and their shape in the sky. And every day we can do a couple more passes oh. to the lure. Ho, oh, that's, a, that's a universal falconry sound to your falcon to say your dinner's served. You haven't caught me out, but I'm going to let you catch it now anyway. And it's a great insurance policy. If the bird decides to chase a pigeon, sometimes that shout will make the bird turn around on the spot knowing it's going to get its dinner. So you can hear her making a noise. This bird's an imprint falcon. It was hand reared by the breeder and came to us fully feathered. So being an imprint bird, it thinks it's a human, it thinks we're falcons, one or the other. And it treats Joe like she's another falcon coming in there. She's mantling a hackles her up. A bit like a sibling trying to steal a dinner even though of course that never happens it's it's almost a switch that eventually goes off in the imprint's mind when they get a little bit more independent so we'll have a little look closer and then we'll leave them to feed up by the way look at all the worms in this magnificent lawn all the worm casts so joe's picked her up off the lure She's had a feed on the lure to reward her for catching it. And then Joe's now feeding her the rest of her reward on the glove. Absolutely fantastic. The old girl just managed to get off her knees again. <laughs> That's the hardest part of flying a falcon for me. <laughs> Certain age. <laughs> well, she went well, didn't she, Joe? Yeah, really pleased. You no. can see she's pretty speedy for a lugger, I think. Yeah, it looks cool. And as bad of conditions as you can have apart from pouring yeah. rain really for a falcon yeah. isn't it there's not a yeah. puff of air look at these trees not a puff of air so no lift whatsoever for this bird and i think joe and i we prefer lugger falcons in their immature plumage yeah. they're a good looking yeah. falcon nice dark markings when they're young 
And like most imprint falcons, are absolute greedy guts. Hell bent thinking that Joe and I must want that food because she thinks she's the same as us. Well, she's just thrown it on the floor now, bless her. I'm gonna move away. Well done, Joe. Enjoy the rest of the vlog. So this is Clive. Clive's one of our top volunteers. And when you say top volunteer, what we're looking for here is not people that are standing around chatting with their hands in their pockets. Um, they can stand around with an owl on their hand. That's fine, because that's the job, isn't it? But <laughs> what Clive does, and I have to say, being an older person myself, I think it's a generational thing. It just cracks on. And I think that's what's lacking in a lot of people nowadays. Probably sound a bit old, but younger people, you, you're a teacher as well. It's hard to find people that use an initiative, isn't it, Clive? It can be, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and them, this kind of job, you just need to learn a bit about it and then crack on, don't you? And you just get yeah. on. And um, Clive knows, like any good volunteer, anyone that works Birds of Prey, this bit here, enjoying the actual topic is 10%, and the rest of it is cleaning up after them, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly sure. right. And how long have you been here, Clive? Uh, we're about eight months, nine months. Wow, now. yeah, that's gone quick, isn't it? Because. Yeah, that's gone quick. Clive and I rarely meet. Clive has a one day a week and I'm often at school. So Clive's been here, Clive's been here that long. <laughs> I bet I'd be, if I said 10 times, that's probably an over-exaggeration that I've seen you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Probably, <laughs> probably, probably not even that, is it? Yeah, so, and the place, Icarus Falcon, you can see the sign behind Clive here. It can't run without the likes of Clive and Clive and Ursula and others like him. So thank you very much, Clive. You're very welcome. Who have you got there? We've got CJ here. He's just being cleaned out, so I'm just holding him while he's being cleaned out. He's watching the other birds. Oh, he is. He's a white-faced owl, but none of us here can see his face because when you point a camera at an owl, they tend to show away oh, yes. for some reason. He says I'm not looking around. Quick, there, there he is, is. a white-faced owl. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Thanks, Clive. Thanks for everything you do. No, you're welcome. Thanks for watching again. And, of course, as always, like and subscribe if you can. It really helps. And we'll see you very soon. Have a really great day.